This tutorial is designed to inform you about the people part of Office 365. Essentially, this is your contacts, your groups, all of the people that you are in touch with. Um, again, just something to point out, there is a difference between the Outlook client or program that you would download to your computer and the web-based version of your mail and people applications. Um, the the web-based versions are light, which means they have a lot of the same capabilities, but they are lacking um, some things. So um, you'll see that the online versions are perfectly functional and a very great option for most of us. But if for some reason you are, say, a secretary or someone that is is in charge of organizing a lot of people and keeping them um, grouped, make setting meetings for them, and things like that, um, you might want to do what I'm about to show you through the Outlook download. Um, so to get here, again, I've gone to the WCPS website and um, accessed the email, um, employee email login, or I've searched Office 365 login in Google and clicked the link to log in there. Again, you log in with your WCPS username and password. <clears throat> Once you're in, it's going to bring you to whichever site you have um, designated as your home site. Um, you can see the pre previous tutorial about changing your settings if that's something that you're interested in doing. I have it come up to the main Office 365 portal page. Um, from here, I'm going to click on where it says People. Now again, this is kind of part of my email. This is the contacts groups part of it. So when you go to people, you're going to see the list of all of the people that you have ha have or have been in contact with. Okay, so you can see that all of my parents um, from previous years and current years are in here, um, as well as you know some other uh, groups that I belong to. Um, I have created um, groups or lists, I should say, parents for 1415, parents 1516. Um, these are lists, so whenever I click here, it shows me all of the people that are there. So I can send an email to this list and it goes to everybody. Um, so that's something that's very useful. So let me show you um, a, how to create a list and then a little bit about the difference between lists and groups. First things first, anytime you want to edit a contact, if you just click on it, you can go to edit and it will allow you to um, add some different things about them, including you know full names, phone numbers if you'd like, instant messenger, contacts, address, um, other notes, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> If you add a contact to your favorites, it just makes you e it makes it easier for you to locate that person. Um, again, so here are my lists, and um, you can see all the lists that I've created or belong to. Now, if I wanted to add this um, person to one of them, I would just click on that link, and it would. Um, so let's say I wanted to add her to the National Boards group. If I just click on that, it's going to add this contact into that group. If I want to make a new list, I just click new contact list and I'm going to call this sample for tutorial. And <clears throat> now whenever I go, let's see. I thought it would show me that she's in there. Anyway, now you can see that she's in the sample for tutorial um, list as well. So whenever I go to write an email and I type that list in, it's going to go to all of those people. Now, there's one major difference between lists and groups, which I've actually just recently discovered. All of mine are currently lists, and that's just, again, a list of contacts that go together. So like all of the parents of my class this year would be a list that go together. All the members of my digital literacy team um, would go together. Now, the difference and what I would want to use the groups for is that with my digital literacy team, we share a lot of um, information with each other. So we share a lot of documents with each other, we share a lot of emails and those kinds of things. So for that, I might want to create a group. Now, Eric Vreeland has created a group for the environmental literacy um, vertical team, and so I'm going to use that as an example. So I am part of this group as well as all the rest of these people. Now, the difference between a list and a group is the list would just be with the purpose of sending an email to those people. With a group, you have a lot of different functions. So 
you can have conversations amongst one another right here. Okay, you can see emails that have happened in the past. You can start a new conversation. You can share a calendar. So you were going to talk about um, Office 365 calendar in the next tutorial, but you could create a calendar for your group, and all, any dates that you add to it would be visible to anybody that's within that group. Same thing, files, you can... Um, have a folder that is basically all of the environmental vertical team um, documents. You could do this for any group that you want to set up. There's a notebook and then there's also connectors as well. You can see the number, the members and you can make um, view details and make changes here to this group as well. Okay, so that's the biggest difference here between um, the list and the group. So that might be something for you to um, keep in mind and something that might be uh, useful for you. Okay, so now I'm in, seem to be in this group calendar. Um, I have different ways that I can get out. I could just go back to the group main group page. I can click on the Office 365, which is going to take me out, out, back to the original. Or I can click in the um, grid box and go back to people from here. So to add a group, it's really simple. You simply push click create here and you select your group name, add anybody that you want to it and create it. Once you create it, then it gives you the options to um, change the theme and do some of those sort of things. So the people part of this is really just a way for you to manage all of the people that you contact um, in a normal day or month, week, whatever. Um, so this part is kind of showing all of the people who are outside of WCPS. The other part of people is the directory. The directory is what's set up by our IT department and basically this is where you can email all of someone. So you could find, let's see, where's Fountaindale? All staff at FDE. Okay, if I click that, I am now um, working with every staff member at Fountaindale Elementary School. So if I sent them an email, it would go to everybody there. Um, again, there are a ton of different ones. There are some for like 15, 16 classroom teachers, encore teachers. They've basically set it up by grade level, by department, anything that you can really think of, way to group it, they have already grouped for you. So this can be really helpful for you whenever you're um, sending emails, if you have specific emails to go to specific people. Or this might be something that you don't really mess with depending on your role and um, you know what you do. Now again, this is also where so you can see where some of these people are starting to pop up. This has everybody from the entire county in it. So again, your contacts are people that you have added. The directory are WCPS people and WCPS groups or lists. So that's a little bit about how the People app can help you keep your contacts um, organized and be kind of useful for you in that way. Up next, we're going to look at the Office 365 calendar and talk about how that can help you and what aspects of that might be able to make you a little more productive and efficient um, when using Office 365.